It's Chris Worley. I'm about to invite Macy Craddock to join us for a conversation, and we're really excited to have you here. Feel free to send us your questions. I will try to catch them on the screen as they come across. This is brand new for us, so please bear with us if we have any uh, technical difficulties. All right, let's see if I can get Miss Macy to join us here. All right, I think she's coming. Well, maybe not. Yes. Okay. There she is. All right. Hi, Macy Craddock. Hey, everybody. I don't know what Chris was saying. I couldn't get on there quick enough, but. Oh, I was just saying that you were going to join us. So this is really amazing that we are doing this. Yay for technology. Um, I know. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'm coming from my bedroom in East Dallas. And Macy, you are? I'm in my studio in Memphis, Tennessee. Nice. Close I've been to there. The River. <laughs> Close to the Mississippi River? A yep. subject, a subject in a few of your pieces in the uh, past. A major undercurrent of creativity in the city, we think. Yeah, I think so. Um, so just real briefly, um, Macy, you and I have now worked together for 20 years. 20. So we, uh, we've grown we, up together. <laughs> say that again? We've grown up together. We have grown up together. Yeah. Your connection is a little faulty, just so you know. So I may okay. ask you some questions from time to time to, to, to restate what you said. But yeah, we have grown up together. And it's been an incredible journey to watch the development of your artistic practice and your focus and your interests and to see you go off to graduate school sort of later on and how that changed um significantly it did yeah. your work which is the work that um you've been showing now you know for what 15 yeah years? about 2005 is okay. really when when i kind of got out of that two-year post-grad school what am i doing thing <laughs> yeah and then um you know it all started to coalesce into a uh, body of work right and I'm going to I'm going to attempt to show some pictures from the current exhibition behind me. Um, so uh, in the in the past, you were working in pastel, um, also mm -hmm. using the watercolor, the gouache. Uh, but you were your subject matter was very different. Very you different. Were, you were working with um, Inanimate, there were a lot of inanimate objects that were the focus of the work, but that always referred to the human user. Yes, I would say so. Uh, but then there was a big shift that occurred. I want you to tell us about that shift because it seems that over time, the inanimate objects, um, all of the kind of um, unnatural subject matter faded away and nature became the pure the the pure subject at a certain point um i mean a part of it part of the shift was material so i moved away from archival beautiful expensive pastel paper to uh paper bags in this really sculptural way um they're I mean, over it took a few years to figure out that I like wanted to create large ones and that I wanted to sew them together as opposed to place them next to each other or glue them or or whatever other kind of attaching mechanism. Um, and that really, for me, kind of brought the sculptural back into my work. Um, they're they're objects very much so. They they're. Hit, objects of use, um, repurposed, 
considered throwaway things, but now they've kind of been given new life and they have this history of use that reflects back on that earlier work that you just mentioned. This, um, I was always attracted to things that reflected a sort of trace of use, a trace of memory or uh, human activity uh, without the, the actual human figure. Right. Um, and then also around in the mid 2000s, I um, moved away from New Orleans to Germany and Katrina happened. So yeah. um, as you know, incredibly traumatic for so many people. And from afar, I just you know, after having lived there for 16 years, I was I was looking at that landscape in a really different way. I mean, obviously it was completely altered. I went back and took quite a few photographs and started to work with them with this new kind of technique that I was developing, which is based on tracing of um, actual photographic imagery and transferring that tracing to these paper bag surfaces. So this these two, uh, this material, exploration and conceptual exploration kind of grew at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and then the focus, like you said, uh, I can't remember, was there already a shift to ruin in your work at that time? Or did Katrina really, was that really Katrina. the springboard for yeah. ruin in your work? Because there was definitely, you know, there were buildings that were had fallen because of uh, just sort of being left to in, in abandon, uh, but the, also the Katrina was obviously a natural uh, phenomenon that occurred. But uh, yeah, ruin, um, ruin, and then rebirth were this kind of simultaneous. Um, That's subject. right. Yeah, yeah, regeneration or reclamation, even nature's reclamation of these landscapes. Once I moved back to Memphis, I started to look around me and there's so much, um, I mean, especially where my studio is, it's kind of in this, on the edge of a very urban part of the city, but it's it's has a real emptiness and abandonment to it. I mean, now gentrification has come in our way, but um, when I moved in down here, it was, there was like foxes and <laughs> snakes and, and trees growing through parks. <laughs> no. I mean, it was really wild and and you know you don't have to drive far outside of the city to find these uh, so many structures kind of dissolving back into the earth so I was focusing on that for a while um, and then at some point I just wanted to completely take the ruins out and I really turned that um, that idea or I refocused that idea on nature itself and and found a parallel really with the way that uh, the earth, the natural landscape changes. Um, obviously, some of it is, is natural processes, erosion, um, you know, especially along a coastline, it's formed and reformed, but also how we alter the landscape itself and, and that kind of regenerative quality that nature has, but the fragility of it as well. Yeah, and that's um, something that your your focus shifting to first of all the use of the grocery bags which is not actually grocery bags right it's those packing bags that you get your liquors and your wines in which means you have to do a lot of really good you know <laughs> yeah good reconnaissance on those yeah a uh, lot of a uh, lot of work that goes into getting those bags but yeah uh, but uh but the the turn to uh the natural world and specifically lands that are important to you personally that you have seen change over time was something mm -hmm. that um, like you said, simultaneously was um, manifested in the reuse of the, of the material, the recycling or the reuse of the material and um, how our lands are shifting and changing. And so there's kind of a conservation uh, without being heavy handed at all. There's just an underlying conservation uh, element uh, mm -hmm. to this work that I think is just sort of a happy kind of occurrence. Because if I remember correctly, 
your story about coming to use these bags was actually kind of a little bit by accident or just um, just a coincidence that you were using it as a that you were using one of those packing bags in the studio in graduate school to to just lay your your wet brush down on after you had been working with the gouache and then uh, you liked the way the paint laid up on that paper so much that you decided to actually paint on that paper right. to, see, to see what that would look like. And the next thing you know, that becomes your canvas, so to speak. So um, I think that's, okay, what materials you shift from archival materials to the more, oh, what made you shift from the archival materials to the ephemeral bags? And Andy, uh, thank you for your question. I don't know if you just heard, but uh, Macy, do you want to explain just a little bit more about how that shift occurred from the pastel papers to the bags? Yeah, I mean, I, I had developed a, a body of work over, I don't know, six or seven years that was, um, past, it was dry pastel and some mixed media with it on, I was using, you know, pretty specific kinds of archival paper. And um, I just kind of got to a point where I felt like I couldn't teach any, anything else to myself. So I decided to go back to graduate school at Maine College of Art in Portland, Maine. And um, when I got up there, you know, I had my trunk full of all this nice stuff and <laughs> all these, you know, art materials that I was really comfortable using and and got there and realized I just needed to kind of put it all away and and try to just find expression through through something that I wasn't, you know, an expert at. So I um, I just put put it down and just kind of looked around me and you know there's the lunch sack basically and and I started working with this I was doing some other things too a lot of found object sculpture some embroidery kind of textile work um sculpture has always been something that has developed alongside of the painting but I would say that the painting is really the main uh thrust of of my work in the studio um, and so but, that, but, but that sculptural element is very important because in a way these works feel like sort of modern day um, artifacts if that makes sense they feel like uh, you've uh, come across a an important uh, scroll like a or a, a papyrus or something from you know, centuries past, when you when it's mounted in a frame, it it be it becomes an object. So it's simultaneously an object and a painting at the same time. And it is kind of this process of construction first before it becomes a painting. Yes. And and also I think um you know there's there's so much out there to look at um with the way artists kind of bring some kind of craft or even tenderness to an object and in that sort of interaction with the thing it changes and it gains like a new life force or power um you know you referred to scrolls or papyrus like i look at a lot of that stuff and you know illuminated manuscripts are, have been a huge influence on me um the way that Balenciaga is uh, commenting that she loves how the bags are symbolic of the terrain, that they are yes. paper bags and that they actually do, they are coming from trees and then trees are also the subject within. Yes. And they literally have a terrain. I mean, the, the folds remain the um, there's, there's a, a very like, uh, what is that word when you, what topographic quality? <laughs> yeah. Topographic yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I've been scrolling through some of these images. I don't know if you can see uh, these, Macy. Can you see? Yes. So I thought that this one uh, was very um, kind of potent since we just had that beautiful super moon uh, the other night. And then also the fact that I don't know if you Instagrammers out there are experiencing the same thing, but I have not witnessed the the clear, crystal, um, 
quality of the air that we're experiencing right now through all of this, um, that we're not polluting the air as much as we normally do on a daily basis because we're all sheltering in place and putting out less pollutants. But I think it's very timely uh, that this show is up in a way because uh, nature has kind of had a chance to breathe uh, because of our um, limited movements these days. And so I just kind of wanted to point that out. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing I've noticed, I, I mean, we've been in Memphis the, the whole time this has been going on. And um, I mean, I'm really lucky to be able to come back and forth to the studio because this is, nobody's here. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's pretty safe feeling. But I mean, people are outside, people are, the weather is beautiful, but the weather's beautiful. <laughs> going outside and spending time outside the parks. Um, I mean, there's some controls about how much they can be used and how many people can be in there, but they're being really enjoyed in a, in a much more robust way, I think, in a slower way. Um, and it's, you know, I think that hopefully at the end of all this, you know, there's, there's going to be some kind of readjustment <laughs> in how we yeah. live how we use this, uh, this world around us. Yeah, uh, I think that if we're all open to it, there are definitely positive things that we can take away from this time. Uh, maybe habits that we want to get ourselves back into or just sort of a refocus on the important, think what's right. really important to us. Uh, yes. I've also, you know, because I work with and live with and love so many artists. I've had a lot of conversations about the fact that for artists, there's not a whole lot of necessarily a whole lot of change in their daily lives because it is such a solitary experience to be an artist. Um, unless you have a, you know, a fairly large number of um, studio assistants that you're working with, it can be a very uh, isolated <laughs> and solitary existence. Um, Studio Daybreak says, I've always loved the unspoken story of the subject as protagonist in Macy's work. So the, 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 that nature is the protagonist. Hey, Colin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yay. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, so anyway, um, how do you feel? Do you feel like your day-to-day uh, -day has changed much aside from having to wear a mask or, uh, you know? No, not really. I mean, obviously, our social life is <laughs> yeah. taking a bit, but, um, you know, I think, uh, I mean, I've, my routine really has not changed that much. I've noticed that I don't feel an, er, the same kind of urgency or rushed feeling in, uh, in my days, and I really like that. I think that's been good for a lot of artists to have something that's, the days are getting back to a more organic way um nobody knows what day it is anymore <laughs> I, know. Um, I know it's true it's true and it's um i don't know how that will all you know if we'll just come rushing back to where we started or if we will gradually get back there or if we'll have some real uh life altering changes yeah, it's there's a lot of uncertainty right now i just I mean, I hope that it um, doesn't, I hope that we're coming through it and, and yeah. it doesn't escalate. Yeah. It's just pretty devastating. It's incredibly devastating. Um, have you found that, uh, how has it affected your practice? Does it, do you find that you're, how's your focus right now? Um, it's in and out. I mean, I, I, I feel like uh, it, it, the first part was very distracting and um, well disruptive. <laughs> sure, I, I feel like it. We were kind I, of glued to the news there, twenty four seven. Yes, I just finished your show, so I was about to kind of take a pause anyway, and um, you know, I wanted to come back in here, but I don't. I don't have any major deadlines looming, so I, I kind of it's an interesting kind of parallel and um, I thought I would be able to, to really expand a little bit more in here with some materials that I've been wanting to do, but 
I ended up just, I've been going back into pieces that were unresolved for some reason or um, just felt like they weren't getting anywhere. So they've been kind of put aside and that feels really good to, to kind of bring some stuff to completion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for any artist that, for me anyway, getting, getting some momentum going in the studio, it takes like about three weeks. Right. And that's how long it's been. So, um, you know, hopefully, I don't know what's coming out of it. I don't, I don't ever know if I'm really progressing until I'm already on the other side of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that, that's an interesting point because you're just kind of in it working toward a goal and then you kind of can sit back on the other side and assess what you've just been through. That's right. That's interesting. Um, so I'm going to, I'm, I haven't really mentioned much about the show that's up right now, but I've been flashing pictures uh, this whole time. It's comprised of seven pieces and the title of this show is Soil and Sea. Um, one thing that has changed a lot in this current body of work is the introduction of color and monochromatic color in a way that we have not seen in your work, maybe ever, uh, to this extent. Uh, I'm just curious if you could speak to that for a minute about where this sudden shift has come from. Um, I mean, I, I think a lot of artists might feel the same. I, I really, color is a great way for me to move forward. <laughs> it's, it's a really, um, it's exciting when I figure out a new kind of, uh, palette and combination of colors. Um, I, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm rather tentative with that, but I just wanted to go for it with this show and kind of uh, setting myself the parameters of, of uh, staying within a range of hues within each piece uh, was a way to do that to where, you know, it wasn't I didn't feel like I was setting myself up to get to, you know, halfway through a piece and be like, oh, my God, that's I can't that doesn't work at all. And <laughs> oranges or whatever, because gouache is not like oil paint. I mean, I can't I, to some extent I can go. You over can't it. Back out. You can't back out. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't back out. No, and, it's a lot uh, like drawing and it's a lot like it's a lot like drawing in that way. I mean, if you if yeah. you're working with pen. You know, it's, it is what it is and you gotta, <laughs> gotta go with it. That's right. So, um, yeah, that was, that was kind of my idea. And I, you know, back to the process part and what you're talking about, you know, a bit ago about, um, the way I'm documenting the landscape and going back to places that I feel connected to, I mean, what I do is I'll take a photograph of a place, I blow it up at Kinko's, just like on black and white poster paper. And then I make a tracing off of that onto tracing paper. So I have this line drawing and mm -hmm. it's, it takes a long time to get that first step down, but it's a way for me to really distance myself from the, the sort of photorealistic quality of the image and to get more into the abstraction, to get more into my own sense of line. Um, and then I have these uh, tracings that I will transfer onto the bags with just carbon paper. Mm -hmm. um, I just use like a woodworker's carbon paper sheet. And I have all of these basically blueprints and kind of will connect different pieces of them, um, combine different photographs, use elements from one and another, and I can go back into a lot of imagery and just get a completely different read on it through color. And yeah. That, that was really what I was doing with this body of work. So, you know, one thing that, so you and I are both from the deep, deep South. I'm from Alabama. You're from Tennessee, you know, we share that in common. We're the same age. Uh, I've tried to explain to my fellow Texans and it's very difficult to explain to people what it means to have been, well, we're Gen Xers. So what it means to have been our generation raised in the deep South. 
And somehow you are able to transmit a sentiment or a feeling of being from that place without it being the story. Uh, there is a kind of haunted, ghostly, historic element to having been raised there that, that, that translates into the work. Um, and I was just wondering if you feel the same that that being from that place and working from that place uh, is important to you or if it, I mean, you can't divorce yourself from yourself, you know, it's going to come out somehow, but do you, do you feel that that's true? Do you feel that, that, that there's some part of that essence in your work? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I paint what I know and, and I think that that intimacy with the landscape does come through in the work. I mean, I kind of think of these in a way as, as poems or. Yes. To the landscape they're they're because I'm working with. Um, Chuck and George said hillbility. You got hillbility. <laughs> But I also, you know, I think for <laughs> me, I, I spend time out in the landscape. I love being in it, but then I come back in here and, I'm, and, and there's this distance, you know, this sort of uh, remembering or longing for those moments. Um, and, you know, that, I don't it's know. A romanticism. It's a romanticism. Aldra, but there, there's a, there's a, a distance between the making part and the being in the landscape part that, um, that does kind of let that poetic part kind of come through. And also, okay. So 20 years ago in your work, you were actually writing words. Yes. <laughs> the work you were writing your own poems in the work, right? Uh, also simultaneously, your um, your titles have always been very poetic and to the point that you have been very specific about the case, you know, whether it's uppercase or lowercase of the words, specific words within each title. And also one thing that you do that is more specific to you than most is that you write a statement about your shows you know you you there's a lot of literature a lot of you know <laughs> a, around this work i mean words language is huge and very important to me i mean i have i've always got like a sheet of paper next to me in the studio where i'm writing down words that have to do with the work and I'll kind of go back into that and, and mine it for ideas for titles, um, obviously going back into the statement, but it's a way for, it's, it's the same way as using a color palette for me. I mean, it's, it's, it's another way to understand what I'm doing and to kind of deepen the work, I think. But I think it's a really, um, it's a good exercise and a practice that I think like you said, deepens your understanding of yourself as a maker uh, and just sort of comprehensively where you've been and where and where you're going with the work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like journaling in a way, uh, which I think is uh, incredibly useful to people to go back and and look at, uh, you know, what you've been doing and where you yeah. are now how those things inform each other or how you've changed, evolved, returned to something. Um, yeah, it's a good tool. Mm -hmm. We continue to get people uh, joining and waving. I don't know if you can see all this commenting, but it's, it's like we've, you've got a great support network. Oh, out there. Everybody's here. <laughs> What's that? I'm really glad to see everybody here. 
Oh, yeah, I thought you were going to say, yeah, you got a big family. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and you've got uh, an amazing fan base, too, Chris. I mean, it's been incredible working with you for this long, and I'm so proud to be in your gallery, and the other artists that you show are just excellent, and really, it's it's really great to have what is this my fifth show with Chris Worley but I don't even know how many shows I've had with Chris yeah. Worley the person <laughs> yeah I think maybe 10 I think 10 and then you know group shows as well it, yeah it's um yeah it's it's this is the first though where we've had a show that didn't actually happen in person that it's online uh guys out there on Instagram you have to you have to appreciate this so I called Macy like, I don't know, you know, the eight, the, let's say it's the 10th of March or something. This right. all, it, it's already becoming evident that we're in trouble uh, with this virus. And she answers the phone and she says, well, it isn't a tornado. <laughs> and the deal with that is that T two out of the 10 shows that we've had with her in the past, there was a tornado the night of her opening, <laughs> which is kind of fitting because her work was, you know, a lot of the work was inspired by Katrina at the time too. So, um, but, uh, but so, yeah, so she's always had something kind of uh, some sort of interesting disaster occur or, or she's had several interesting disasters occur around her shows. So, this was this was a new one for uh, us, though, Macy. Very yes, <laughs> and for so many, right? Think about how many. There's so many shows up, and people, you know, they work so hard to get these, yeah, this body of work together. Yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, things will open up soon, and people will be able to see it in person. But I'm just glad to have it out there. It feels really good to have new work out there during the this, and to be able to talk about it. I mean. These, uh, this new reality of Instagram and everything has, has helped a lot for artists, I think. I definitely have a new appreciation for it and I'm gonna do better to engage personally because I've been, <laughs> I've been someone who, I'm not an oversharer by any stretch of the imagination, but I can definitely see how, um, how good it is to connect with people. And now that we're all yeah. so uh, holed up, you know, this is, this is what we got. So I'm grateful for it. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak with you in the studio um, this afternoon. It's a, uh, it's a really cool studio, you guys. It's in the medicine factory, uh, mm -hmm. which the roots of that building are what, Macy? Uh, around, I think 19, early 1900s, it was built. And it was like, potions and elixirs and soaps and things <laughs> tonic so it's, yeah yeah for you know, all your ailments yeah cool <laughs> so well, the legacy can <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right yes there's some good medicine coming out of there from miss craddock's <laughs> studio and we have it all on view uh on our website in the form of this incredible work so if you guys want to see more, please feel free to scroll the website, chriswhirley.com. Take a look. If you have any questions, my incredible assistant director, Nicole Norton, and I are at the ready to speak to you. You can call the gallery phone. We uh, still answer that phone. It just gets rerouted. Um, and also inquiries at chriswhirley.com. So, Macy, is there anything else that you wanted to say out there to the uh, Instagram world before we sign off? I don't did think I say, so. Did I say Chris Worley? Chris? <laughs> Sorry? I said, did I say Chris com? by the way? I think I did. You did <laughs> and MacyCraddock.com. And MacyCraddock.com, where you can really see a comprehensive um, look at her work. What? How far back do you go, Macy, on that? Uh, really till about 2005. Okay. Well, that's, that's an yeah. important time. So yeah. cool. Well, thanks, Macy. Thank you for it's so nice to see your face. Yeah, you too. 
And I look forward to seeing all of your faces back at the gallery at some point. Thank you so much for being here today. Appreciate you all very much. Y'all take you. care. Be safe. Be well. Hugs and kisses.